Three, two, one, zero. Ignition. The SpaceX launch of two astronauts into space is a momentous occasion. Not because it's a technological achievement, but rather because it marks the beginning of a new kind of space race, one which the United States is clearly leading. In reality, what SpaceX is achieving is nothing new. Astronauts are regularly launched into space and back every year. So what is this new space race all about and why does the US want to stay ahead? When the US landed astronauts on the moon to prove to the Soviet Union and indeed the rest of the world that capitalism was the superior economic system, NASA's budget was astronomical. Since then, it has never seen the same level of investment. Missions shifted to slower, gradual research on board space stations rather than the giant leaps for mankind. But now, private companies are disrupting the status quo. Space activities become multi-sectored, with civilian and military, government and private sector, scientific and commercial, and they're all vying to establish themselves in a new, sustainable space environment. The USA were dependent on the Russian Soyuz craft to ferry American astronauts to the ISS. Having human spaceflight capability frees up that dependence, and it also moves human spaceflight along from having to depend on a rocket that was essentially designed in the, in the late 1960s. Despite the new sort of space environment not necessarily just being a showcase for technical prowess, the lack of capacity to send astronauts into space was seen as a bit of a humiliation for a leading space power. As an American private company, SpaceX is now offering NASA a cheaper alternative to launch astronauts into the Earth's orbit. While a seat on the Russian craft costs around $88 million, SpaceX will do it for around $55 million. It will also free up NASA to focus on other truly significant achievements. The Artemis program, I suspect, is going to keep NASA's hands full. The Artemis program being the attempts to get humans back on the surface of the moon. So I think NASA's going to have its hands full very much with that. And that's why the role of the private sector is really important, because NASA doesn't want to be wasting time launching. It doesn't want to be wasting time getting astronauts up to the ISS. It is they bring in an entrepreneurial spirit that, frankly, NASA has lost over the last 50 years. Private companies like SpaceX uh, and the others are willing to take some risks, willing to try new things, which improve efficiencies. The other thing they bring, frankly, is money. They bring money to the table. They're using some of their own money, SpaceX, um, uh, Blue Origin. Uh, Bezos is cashing in a, a billion dollars per year of Amazon stock and putting it into uh, the Blue Origin company. There is also something else entirely new in this space race, which was not a factor during the Cold War. Private space companies are making a conscious effort to make spaceflight look cool. Spacesuits now resemble those seen in Hollywood sci-fi films, command modules feature touchscreens, and launch broadcasts have been glamorized. It's very much part of the SpaceX mission to make space appeal across the generations. I mean, space is cool, you know? I think most people, when they really think about it, being able to travel in space, I mean, that is, that's a luxury still only a handful of people have been able to do. There is a marked contrast between the Soyuz space capsule, which looks old space tech, and the new touchscreen sleek seats of the, of the uh, Crew Dragon. None of us are really racing anybody else. It really is, um, it's more of a collaboration to, to space, because what we're seeing now is a collaboration between NASA and a number of companies that, that wouldn't have happened in the 1960s, but because of the advance in technology over the last 50 years, now space is more accessible, the moon is more accessible. 